On March 13, 2013, Jorge Bergoglio from Argentina was elected anti-Pope Francis of the Vatican II sect. This brief overview will prove from Francis's words and actions that he is a heretic. We will be quoting from the Vatican's official newspaper, La Zervatura Romano, and two of Francis's books that document his beliefs on various topics, conversations with Jorge Bergoglio and on heaven and earth, Francis's heresies on the Jews. Jews reject that Jesus Christ is God, but Jesus Christ says in John 8, 24, quote, For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sin. The Catholic Church infallibly teaches that you must believe in Jesus Christ and have the Catholic faith for salvation. It teaches that it's a mortal sin to observe or practice Judaism. But Francis endorses the false religion of Judaism and prays in Jewish synagogues. Francis, Conversations with Jorge Bergoglio, page 208, quote, Not long ago I was in a synagogue taking part in a ceremony. I prayed a lot, and while praying I heard a phrase from one of the books of wisdom that had slipped my mind. Lord, may I bear mockery in silence. It gave me much peace and joy. Francis on Heaven and Earth, page 188, quote, The church officially recognizes that the people of Israel continue to be the chosen people. Nowhere does it say you lost the game. Now it is our turn. It is a recognition of the people of Israel. This clearly means that Francis holds that people who reject Jesus Christ are the chosen people in God's sight. This is a blasphemy against God. Francis on Heaven and Earth, page 37, quote, There also exists the ministerial intercession of a rabbi or a priest who prays or asks for the health of another, and it is granted. What gives credibility to a person who is healing according to the law of God is simplicity, humility, and the absence of a spectacle. So Francis believes that Jewish rabbis have a true spiritual ministry of intercession according to the law of God. Francis on Heaven and Earth, page 220, Francis speaks to the Jewish rabbi Skorka, quote, I did not forget how you invited me twice to pray and to speak in the synagogue, and I invited you to speak to my seminarians about values, end quote. In the cathedral in Buenos Aires, Argentina, on April 15, 1998, Francis held an interreligious service to honor deceased Jews. During this meeting, Francis said to the Jews, quote, We are all brothers because we have the seal of God in our hearts. The seal of God is baptism, which Jews reject. Que sabe que todos somos hermanos porque llevamos el sello de Dios en nuestro corazón. In September 2004, Francis participated in a Jewish service inside a synagogue. And on November 9, 2005, Francis had another service inside a basilica commemorating deceased Jews. This included Francis lighting a candle in honor of them. In 2007, Francis attended Jewish Rosh Hashanah services at a synagogue in Argentina. Francis told the Jewish congregation during his visit that he went to the synagogue to examine his heart, quote, like a pilgrim together with you, my elder brothers, end quote. On July 7, 2008, Francis endorsed Rabbi Sergio Bergman's books. Francis called him a, quote, believer and said, quote, his job is the one of a rabbi who, as our master, helps us, end quote. Su trabajo es el de un rabino que como maestro nos ayuda a entendernos. On June 7, 2010, Francis visited the Jewish Center in Argentina and called Jews, quote, our elder brothers, and quote, the chosen people of God. He also prayed in front of a list of deceased Jews in order to honor them. Ese recuerdo, ¿verdad? Es un eslabón más en la cadena de dolor, persecución, sangre que el pueblo elegido de Dios ha sufrido en la historia. Doy gracias al Señor porque en este día le permite compartir un trecho del camino con sus hermanos mayores. On October 11, 2012, Francis gave Rabbi Abraham Skorka, who is a well-known supporter of homosexuality, an honorary degree at a quote Catholic university. After the rabbi received the degree, he said, quote, We are waiting for the Messiah, but in order for him to come, we have to prepare the land. End quote. Estamos esperando el Mesías, pero para que él llegue, le tenemos que preparar el terreno. So the rabbi explicitly rejected the Messiah, Jesus Christ, right in front of Francis. 
On November 12, 2012, Francis was the keynote speaker and took active part in another Jewish religious ceremony in the cathedral in Buenos Aires, Argentina. This Jewish religious ceremony was again dedicated to honor deceased Jews. The final candle commemorating deceased Jews was jointly lit by a rabbi and Francis. Under Francis' direction, memorial services honoring deceased Jews have been celebrated in so-called Catholic churches in Argentina every year since 1998. To take part in a Jewish religious ceremony for deceased Jews is complete apostasy from the Catholic faith. On December 14, 2012, just a few months before his election as anti-pope, Francis celebrated Hanukkah with Jews in Argentina, which included Francis lighting a menorah. On March 13, 2013, just a few hours after Francis was elected anti-pope, he sent out a greeting letter to the Christ-rejecting chief rabbi of Rome. On March 25, 2013, Francis sent a telegram to Rome's chief rabbi for Passover. Francis said that he esteems Jews and asked them to pray for him. He also asked that God, quote, continue to deliver you from all evil, even though the rabbi rejects Jesus, the only one who can deliver us from evil. Francis, April 20th, 2015, message speaking of the recent death of the chief rabbi of Rome, quote, I raise prayers to the Most High, rich in love and faithfulness, that he may welcome him into his kingdom of peace. Francis believes that Jesus, God, will welcome a man who said he is not God. In his June 24, 2013 address to members of the International Jewish Committee, Francis called Jews believers and asked Jews to pray for him. Rabbi Skorka was a guest of Francis at the Vatican for several days at the end of September 2013. In an interview with the newspaper La Stampa, Skorka spoke about his visit with Francis, Skorka said that Francis made sure he had kosher food and prayed with him, quote, I eat with him at breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. He cares for me and controls everything regarding my food to make sure it is all kosher and according to my religious tradition. These are festive days and I have to say certain prayers at meals, and I expand the last prayer and translate it. He accompanies me together with the others at table, his secretaries and a bishop, and they all say amen at the end, the rabbi said. We are dreaming of traveling together to Israel soon, and the Pope is working on this subject. I spoke to him, Francis, about evangelization, and he stated emphatically that the Catholic Church cannot engage in proselytism, end quote. Proselytism is trying to convert someone. Francis emphatically teaches that people should not attempt to convert non-Catholics to the Catholic faith. Francis, August 7, 2013, video message for the Feast of St. Cajetan. Quote, do you need to convince the other to become Catholic? No, no, no. Voy a convencer a otro que sea católico. No, no, no. Francis, April 30, 2015, discourse to the Curcio movement. Quote, One thing I would like to say to your movement, you have not proselytized. This is a virtue. Una cosa del vostro movimiento. Voi non avete fatto proselitismo. Francis declares that not attempting to convert others to the Catholic faith is a virtue. This is outrageous. As we can see, Francis is quite outspoken about how no one should attempt to convert anyone to the Catholic faith, while Francis believes that Catholics should not try to convert others to Catholicism, he does say that people need a so-called ecological conversion, a quote, conversion with creation. Francis says this in paragraphs 217 and 218 of his May 24, 2015 quote encyclical on the environment. Francis's so-called encyclical was an endorsement of radical environmentalism. It is interesting to note that one of the main presenters chosen by anti-Pope Francis to present his new quote encyclical on the environment was an atheist named Hans Schellenhuber. Schellenhuber has said that the world is overpopulated by at least 6 billion people. He is a promoter of world government and an earth constitution that would hold power over every government and nation. Francis personally appointed Schellenhuber to the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. Francis's so-called encyclical promotes earth worship and he has actually done this many times so far during his reign as anti-pope. Here's just one example. Francis, November 20, 2014, addressed, quote, 
The earth never forgives, protect our sister earth, our mother earth, so that she does not react with destruction. La tierra no perdona nunca. <laughs> Cuidar la hermana tierra, la madre tierra, para que no responda con la destrucción. Francis seems to be saying that the earth will judge us in addition to God. In fact, he seems to indicate that we will have to answer to creation. This is earth worship. He's a heretic. Francis has openly admitted that he might teach heresy. Francis, video message, May 23, 2015. Y me viene a la mente decir algo que puede ser una insensatez. Francis's heresies on Islam. On August 2, 2005, Francis prayed before the dead body of the Muslim president of the Islamic Center of Argentina. The body was placed east toward Mecca. The Islamic imam recited verses from the Quran and asked for blessings from Muhammad. Francis said, quote, With my prayer, I ask the Creator, the most merciful, to repay him for all the good he did. End quote. St. Thomas Aquinas taught, quote, if anyone were to worship at the tomb of Muhammad, he would be deemed an apostate. Francis's action of venerating the dead body of a Muslim leader is equivalent to worshiping at the tomb of Muhammad. In his homily of July 8, 2013, Francis spoke to Muslims, saying, quote, I also think with affection of those Muslim immigrants who this evening begin the fast of Ramadan, which I trust will bear abundant spiritual fruit. Un pensiero. Lo rivolgo ai cari immigrati musulmani che stanno oggi alla sera stanno iniziando il digiuno di Ramadan con l'augurio di abbondanti frutti spirituali. In his July 10, 2013 message to Muslims for the end of Ramadan, Francis said, quote, esteem and friendship for all Muslims, especially those who are religious leaders. Christians and Muslims, we are called to respect the religion of the other, its teachings, its symbols, its values. Particular respect is due to religious leaders and to places of worship. Think and speak respectfully of other religions and their followers and to avoid ridiculing or denigrating their convictions and practices. Happy feast to you all, end quote. To respect a false religion, its teachings, or its adherence, as Francis does, is condemned in Catholic teaching. It is apostasy from the Catholic faith. On Saturday, November 29, 2014, anti-Pope Francis committed another public act of apostasy by praying with the Islamic Grand Mufti inside the Blue Mosque in Istanbul, Turkey. Muslims consider the Blue Mosque to be one of Istanbul's most important mosques. Francis and the Mufti followed Islamic custom by entering the mosque barefoot. The Grand Mufti showed Francis the mosque and read to Francis verses from the Koran explaining what they mean. One could correctly say that Francis willingly submitted himself to instruction in the Islamic faith. Afterwards, the Islamic Mufti and Francis prayed together in the mosque silently for two minutes. Anti-Pope Francis bowed his head, closed his eyes, and put his hands together in, quote, prayer. He stood shoulder to shoulder with the Islamic leader. After the prayers were finished, the Mufti said, quote, May God accept it, end quote. The Vatican spokesman said the prayers were, quote, silent adoration, end quote. Francis said to the Grand Mufti, quote, I also want to ask you to pray for me. The Vatican said they didn't want to offend Muslims, so they moved up Francis's mosque visit so it wouldn't conflict with a Muslim noon quote prayer time. Francis's actions are another clear and public example of his rejection of the Catholic religion. Anyone who sees Francis's actions and still regards him as having the Catholic faith is a heretic. The Catholic Church has repeatedly taught that there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church and that false religions like Islam are abominable sects. Pope Eugene IV, 1434, quote, there is hope that very many from the abominable sect of Muhammad will be converted to the Catholic faith. In September 2014, anti-Pope Francis repeatedly taught that there are Islamic martyrs. 
please see the article in which Antipope Francis repeatedly teaches that there are Muslim, quote, martyrs. That incredible heresy which blatantly rejects the defined Catholic dogma that only Catholics are martyrs is another proof that Francis does not profess the true faith in the external forum, but a false faith. A profession of faith is made not only by words, such as the words we've cited from Francis, but also by deeds. Since Francis does not profess the true faith in the external forum, but a false faith, he prays with Muslims, he teaches that they can be saved, he teaches that they have martyrs, etc. According to Catholic teaching on church unity and the profession of faith, it is forbidden under pain of heresy and mortal sin to consider him in the Catholic Church. That's explained in the video why Francis must not be considered the Pope. Francis's apostasy in the mosque was essentially a repeat of what Antipope Benedict XVI did on November 30, 2006. On that day, Benedict XVI, just like Francis, prayed with a grand mufti. Benedict XVI faced east toward Mecca. On November 28, 2006, two days before his visit to the Blue Mosque, Benedict XVI said, quote, I greet all the Muslims in Turkey with particular esteem. This noble land has also seen a remarkable flowering of Islamic civilization in the most diverse fields. On January 19, 2007, Benedict XVI spoke about his visit to the mosque, quote, I frequently express the respect of the Catholic Church for Islam and the esteem of the Pope and the faithful for Muslim believers, especially during my visit to Istanbul's Blue Mosque. On December 22, 2006, Benedict XVI said, quote, my visit to Turkey afforded me the opportunity to show also publicly my respect for the Islamic religion. Benedict XVI also happily received a Koran and said in September 2006, quote, My personal view of the Koran, for which I have the respect due to the holy book of a great religion. See our video, The Heresies of Benedict XVI, for more of Benedict XVI's astounding heresies on various topics. That video completely demolishes the lie promoted by, quote, conservative and, quote, traditional Catholics that Benedict XVI has the Catholic faith. Also, many of you know that the recently, quote, canonized anti-Pope John Paul II did things like bowing and kissing the Koran on May 14, 1999. And on March 21, 2000, John Paul II made the incredible statement, quote, May St. John the Baptist protect Islam. As our information proves to anyone of goodwill, these anti-popes are apostates from the Catholic faith. They are not true popes, but illegitimate heretical anti-popes. Francis, quote, homily, September 21, 2014, quote, Recalling the decades of atrocious suffering and harsh persecutions against Catholics, Orthodox, and Muslims, we can say that Albania was a land of martyrs, Clerics and ministers of other religions paid for their fidelity with their lives. Francis says that heretics, Muslims, and members of, quote, other religions who died embracing their false religions were, quote, martyrs. That is to teach that Muslims are martyrs. It's a dogma that only Catholics can be martyrs. Francis is a complete heretic. Francis's heresies on other false religions. In On Heaven and Earth, page 236, Francis wrote about new religious belief systems and movements. He stated, quote, I am respectful of all new spiritual proposals. Surviving the passage of time is the major test of spiritual purity. So according to the apostate Francis, the false religion of Hinduism is a true and pure spirituality because it has been around for 3,000 years and has survived the passage of time. During an in-flight interview on January 16, 2015, Francis spoke of his visit to a Buddhist temple in Colombo, quote, In this temple there are relics of two disciples of the Buddha that for them are very important. These relics were in England and they managed to get them there, and they took them out so we could look at them. Francis said that he went to visit the Buddhist temple and that the Buddhists brought out, quote, very important Buddhist, quote, relics so that he could, quote, look at them. He's an apostate. On June 24, 2015, in a meeting with Buddhists, Francis asked God to bless Buddhists and he received a formal Buddhist blessing. Francis addressed May 18, 2013, quote, Promote religious freedom for everyone, everyone. Every man and every woman must be free in his or her profession of religion, whatever it may be, end quote. The Catholic Church condemns the idea that religious freedom should be a universal civil right. 
After the September 11, 2001 attacks in America, Francis participated in a prayer meeting with leaders of other false religions at the foot of an obelisk in Argentina. The obelisk is a Masonic phallic symbol. In his January 6, 1928 encyclical Martalium Animos, Pope Pius XI condemned Catholic participation in interreligious prayer meetings as apostasy. He taught that those who favor this activity have abandoned the Catholic religion. He also said, quote, So, venerable brethren, it is clear why this apostolic see has never allowed its subjects to take part in the assemblies of non-Catholics, end quote. But, as we have already seen, Francis has been involved in numerous interreligious prayer meetings. On January 24, 2002, Francis invited many different leaders of false religions to pray in the cathedral in Buenos Aires, Argentina. The meeting included leaders from Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Judaism. Francis' announcement during the meeting was that, quote, every religious group will pray according to their faith, language, and tradition, in full respect for others, end quote. This is apostasy. On May 5, 2006, Francis prayed with members of the Universal Parliament of Religions, and in 2011, Francis held his own interreligious prayer meeting. On March 20, 2013, Francis had a meeting with leaders of different religions, which included schismatics, Jews, and Muslims. Francis said, quote, Yesterday morning during Holy Mass, through you I felt the spiritual presence of the communities which you represent, end quote. He went on to say that he esteems them. Francis, January 13, 2015, addressed at an interreligious and ecumenical gathering, quote, Dear friends, I am grateful for the opportunity to take part in this meeting which brings together, among others, the four largest religious communities integral to the life of Sri Lanka, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, and Christianity. I thank you for your presence and for your warm welcome. I also thank those who have offered prayers and blessings. Dear friends, <clears throat> I'm grateful for the opportunity to take part in this meeting, which brings together, among others, the four largest religious communities integral to the life of Sri Lanka. Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, and Christianity. I thank you for your presence and for your warm welcome. Yeah, I also thank those who have offered prayers and blessings. Francis addresses an interreligious gathering that includes Hindus who worship idols and false gods. He thanks them for their, quote, prayers and blessings. That is to endorse and encourage prayer to false gods and thus idolatry. Francis, June 6, 2015, address at the John Paul II Youth Center, quote, Muslims, Jews, Orthodox, Catholics, and others, we are all brothers and sisters. We all adore the one God. Never ever let there be separation among you, brotherhood and union. Musulmani, Islamici, Ebrei, Ortodossi, Catolici, altre religioni, tutti siamo fratelli, tutti adoriamo un unico Dio. Mai, mai separazione fra noi. Fratellanza e unione. Francis says that Muslims and Jews who do not believe that Jesus is God adore God. That is blasphemy. As we have just shown, Francis completely rejects the infallible teaching of the Catholic Church that members of false religions need to accept the Catholic faith for salvation. Pope Eugene IV, Council of Florence, 1439, ex cathedra, quote, Whoever wishes to be saved needs above all to hold the Catholic faith. Unless each one preserves this whole and inviolate, he will without a doubt perish in eternity. Francis respects atheists. In On Heaven and Earth, pages 12 and 13, Francis says he respects atheists and doesn't try to convert them, quote, I do not approach the relationship in order to proselytize or convert the atheist. I respect him, nor would I say that his life is condemned, because I am convinced that I do not have the right to make a judgment about the honesty of that person. Every man is the image of God, whether he is a believer or not. For that reason alone, everyone has a series of virtues, qualities, and a greatness of his own. Francis, April 30, 2015, Discourse, quote, A memory comes to mind of a woman born in a family of atheists, and she too was an atheist, not agnostic, but atheist, but she was a good woman. Mi viene un, un ricordo 
de una señora nata en familia atea. Ella es atea, no agnóstica, atea. Ma una brava donna. Francis proclaims that a woman who explicitly didn't believe in God was a, quote, good woman. An atheist interviewed Francis for the Italian newspaper The Republic. The interview was published on October 1, 2013. Francis directly told the atheist that he has no intention of trying to convert him. Francis rejects proselytism four different times in this interview. Francis declared, quote, Proselytism is solemn nonsense. It makes no sense, end quote. Francis then goes on to say that each person has his own idea of what is good or evil. He encourages each person to follow the good as each person conceives it. This is outrageous apostasy. In his September 11, 2013 letter to the Italian newspaper The Republic, Francis teaches that people who do not believe in God can be saved. This is complete apostasy from the Catholic faith. Francis respects those who commit suicide. Francis on Heaven and Earth, pages 92 and 93, quote, there was a time when they did not perform funerals for those that committed suicide because they had not continued on towards the goal. They ended the path when they wanted to. But I still respect the one who commits suicide. He is a person who could not overcome the contradictions in his life. I do not reject him, end quote. Francis's Teaching on Man Francis, Conversations, page 220, quote, For me, hope is in the human person. I believe in man. I'm not saying man is good or bad, just that I believe in man. Francis's heretical teaching on sin. Francis, Conversations, pages 120 and 121, quote, I often say that the only glory we have, as St. Paul says, is that of being sinners. St. Paul doesn't say this. This is outrageous. Francis then goes on to say on the next page, quote, That's why, for me, sin is not a stain I need to clean, end quote. Francis, Conversations, page 129, quote, It is a problem of sin. For four years, Argentina has been living a sinful existence because it has not taken responsibility for those who have no food or work, end quote. Notice that the only sin Francis speaks of is not giving people food or work. He says nothing about sins against God and God's faith. Francis' interview with the Republic, October 1, 2013, quote, the most serious of the evils that afflict the world these days are youth unemployment and the loneliness of the old. This, to me, is the most urgent problem that the Church is facing, end quote. Francis on Communism. Francis, Conversations, page 39, quote, It's true that I was, like the rest of my family, a practicing Catholic, but my mind was not made solely for religious questions. I read Our Word and Proposals, a publication by the Communist Party and I loved every article ever written by Leonidas Barletta, one of their best-known members, end quote. Francis, March 5, 2014, statement during an interview, quote, I have known many great people who professed Marxism. Francis on the death penalty. Francis, Conversations, page 101, quote, there is now an increasing awareness of the immorality of the death penalty, end quote. This statement is completely heretical. The Catholic Church has always supported the legitimacy of the death penalty for extremely grave crimes. Francis promotes sex education. Francis, Conversations, page 111, quote, The Church is not opposed to sex education. Personally, I believe that it ought to be available throughout children's upbringing, adapted to different age groups. In truth, the Church always provided sex education, although I acknowledge that it hasn't always been adequate, end quote. Pope Pius XI, December 31, 1931, quote, For here and there a great many foolishly and dangerously hold in advance the method of education which is disgustingly called sexual, end quote. Francis encourages priests to leave the priesthood if they fall in love. Francis, Conversations, pages 118 and 119, quote, there are times when a priest does fall in love and must reassess his vocation and his life. Then he must go to the bishop and tell him, quote, I've made up my mind. I didn't know I was going to feel something so beautiful. I truly love this woman. And he asked to leave the priesthood. And what do you do in these cases? Francis, I stay with him. I accompany him on his spiritual journey. If he is sure of his decision, I even help him find work. 
we request what is called dispensation permission from Rome, and then he would be allowed to receive the sacrament of marriage, end quote. So Francis will help a man who has taken a permanent vow of chastity before God to break his vow and leave the priesthood. Francis's heretical teaching on gay, quote, marriage and homosexuality. It has now been documented and confirmed that Francis favored homosexual civil unions when he was in Argentina. He just didn't want a homosexual civil union to be called a marriage. This is heresy. It means that Francis approved perverted and abominable sexual behavior that is condemned in scripture and Catholic teaching. His stance is no different at all from endorsing abortion under the condition that the state does not give abortion special or privileged status by using state funds for it. Notice the following interesting statements Francis makes about gay, quote, marriage and homosexuals. Francis on Heaven and Earth, page 117, quote, When the head of the government of the city of Buenos Aires, Mauricio Macri, did not appeal the judge's opinion right away authorizing a same-sex wedding, I felt that I had something to say to inform. I saw myself with an obligation to state my opinion. It was the first time in 18 years as bishop that I criticized a government official. If you analyze the two declarations that I formulated, at no time did I speak about homosexuals, nor did I make any derogatory reference toward them. Macri told me that these were his convictions. I respected him for that, but the head of the government does not have to transfer his personal convictions to law. In no moment did I speak disrespectfully about homosexuals, end quote. Francis says he respects those who favor the abomination of same-sex, quote, marriage, and he says he never was disrespectful to sodomites and perverts. Francis also mentions how he allowed the pro-gay, quote, marriage president of Argentina, Nestor Kirchner, to preside over a, quote, Catholic memorial service to honor deceased, quote, Catholic priests and seminarians. Francis, Conversations, page 145, quote, I even asked him to preside over the ceremony when he arrived at the church, end quote. Later, when the apostate president died, Francis immediately offered a public, quote, requiem mass for him. Francis also allowed politicians who are vocal abortion and gay, quote, marriage supporters to receive, quote, communion at his installation, quote, mass. On August 19, 2013, Francis was interviewed by America Magazine. In the interview, Francis clearly teaches that active homosexuals are not condemned or rejected by God. The church, based on scripture, teaches the opposite. Francis on Mary's reaction to the death of Jesus. Francis, May 29, 2015, address speaking of the Blessed Virgin Mary's reaction to the crucifixion and death of Jesus, quote, with that wounded body lying in her arms, that body that suffered so before dying. Inside, surely she wanted to say to the angel, liar, I was deceived. She too had no answers. Francis accuses Mary of wanting to call the angel a liar. Francis has rejected Catholic apologetics. In his January 25, 2015 speech to non-Catholics, he said, quote, Put aside all polemical or apologetic approaches. He went on to denounce, quote, Discussions in which each party tries to convince the other of the soundness of their opinions. Mettendo da parte ogni atteggiamento polemico o apologetico. L'unità dei cristiani, siamo convinti, non sarà il frutto di raffinate discussioni teoriche nelle quali ciascuno tenterà di convincere l'altro della fondatezza delle proprie opinioni. In a speech on May 4, 2015, Francis called Lutherans, quote, brothers and sisters in faith. On February 16, 2015, Francis said that there are, quote, outstanding saintly witnesses to Christ from various confessions. He went on to say, quote, it makes no difference whether they be Catholics, Orthodox, Copts, or Protestants. They are Christians. Francis teaches that it makes no difference whether someone is Catholic, Protestant, or, quote, Orthodox. But the Catholic Church has always taught that it makes all the difference whether one is Catholic. It's a dogma that a person cannot be saved without the Catholic faith. Francis's heretical teaching on heretics and schismatics. Francis on Heaven and Earth, page 128, quote, I also do not agree with religion classes that entail discrimination against non-Catholics, end quote. 
In Argentina, Francis would recommend, quote, Catholics seeking an exorcism to a Lutheran exorcist. In On Heaven and Earth, page 72, Francis quotes what his grandmother told him when he was younger, quote, They are Protestants, but they are good. That was the wisdom of the true religion. In 2006, Francis knelt to receive a blessing from Protestants during an ecumenical meeting. Francis did the same thing immediately after being elected anti-pope on 313.13. Francis, instead of blessing the people, asked the people to bless him. This included numerous members of various non-Catholic religions. On March 18, 2013, Francis wrote to the new leader of the Anglican sect. He called the layman Justin Welby, quote, reverend. Even though the Catholic Church under Leo XIII reaffirmed on September 13, 1896 that the Anglican rite of ordination is totally invalid. Francis said that Welby has a, quote, pastoral ministry, and he called him, quote, Archbishop of Canterbury, which means he believes that the leader of the heretical and schismatic Anglican sect is the true jurisdictional leader of the one true church for Canterbury, England. He also asked the heretical and schismatic leader to pray for him. In his June 14, 2013 address to the schismatic Welby, Francis welcomes him, quote, not as a guest or a stranger, but as a fellow citizen of the saints and the family of God, end quote. Francis thus emphatically teaches that the non-Catholic Welby, whom Francis calls, quote, your grace, is a member of the Church of Christ. This is outrageous heresy. Francis then says he is, quote, deeply grateful that the heretical and schismatic layman prayed for him. Francis goes on to say that he has profound respect for Anglicans, and that there is now a better appreciation for Anglican spiritual and so-called liturgical traditions. Francis, April 30, 2015, addressed, quote, I think also of the martyrs of Uganda, half Catholics and half Anglicans. To say that there are Anglican martyrs is heretical and a denial of the infallible dogma that there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church. As it is taught in Vatican II, Francis holds that Protestants and the, quote, Orthodox are in the Church of Christ, and that they don't need to be converted to the Catholic faith for salvation. That is heresy. Francis, May 10, 2013, greeting to schismatic, quote, Orthodox Pope of Alexandria, Egypt, quote, Your Holiness, in sincerely assuring you of my prayers that the whole flock entrusted to your pastoral care may be ever faithful to the Lord's call, I invoke the protection of both St. Peter and St. Mark, end quote. Francis calls the schismatic, quote, Holiness, and says God entrusts his flock to a schismatic, he also calls him a pastor, which means he believes the schismatic leader is a true jurisdictional leader of the one true Church of Christ. In his June 28, 2013 discourse to a delegation of the Eastern Schismatic Quote Orthodox Church of Constantinople, Francis begs them to pray for him, saying, quote, I ask you finally to pray for me. I need your prayers. Francis, March 28, 2015 telegram on the occasion of the death of the schismatic leader Mardinka IV. Quote, the Christian world has lost an important spiritual leader, a courageous and wise pastor. May the Lord receive him into his kingdom and grant him eternal rest. And may the memory of his long and devoted service to the church live on as a challenge and inspiration to us all. Francis calls the deceased schismatic leader an important spiritual leader and wise pastor. Francis says that his long service to a schismatic church should be an inspiration to everyone. Francis therefore declares service to the schismatic church to be service to the true church of Christ. Speaking of the recent death of the head of the schismatic Syrian, quote, Orthodox Church on January 30, 2015, Francis said, quote, I pray for the eternal rest of this dedicated servant of God. According to Francis, to be a leader of a schismatic church is to be a, quote, dedicated servant of God. Francis, General Audience, June 19, 2013, quote, Today I spent 40 minutes with an evangelical pastor and we prayed together, end quote. Oggi, prima di uscire da casa, sono stato 40 minuti, più o meno, mezz'ora, con un pastore evangelico. E abbiamo pregato insieme. In On Heaven and Earth, pages 217 and 218, Francis recommends that different denominations, quote, walk together in a reconciled diversity by doing things together, by praying together, without nullifying the diverse traditions. Here, Francis promotes the heresy that we should not try to convert non-Catholics 
but walk and pray together with them without nullifying their diverse heretical and schismatic traditions. Francis, speaking about the, quote, orthodox schismatics in his interview of August 19, 2013, says, quote, We must walk united with our differences. There is no other way to become one. This is the way of Jesus, end quote. So according to Francis, schismatics should continue to reject Catholic teaching and don't need to convert. Pope Pius XI, Mortali Manimos, quote, For the union of Christians can only be promoted by promoting the return to the one true Church of Christ of those who are separated from it, end quote. Francis, the liturgical revolutionary. Here is Francis celebrating a modernist kitty quote mass with female liturgical dancing. Francis on Heaven and Earth, page 102, quote, In Catholicism, for example, many women lead a liturgy of the word. Francis has, of course, given, quote, communion in the hand throughout his life. Francis has never offered a valid Mass, not just because he offers the invalid new Mass, but also because he was, quote, ordained on 121369 in the new invalid rite of ordination. Francis, like his predecessor, Benedict XVI, was, quote, consecrated a bishop in the new invalid rite of consecration. A true pope is the Bishop of Rome. Francis is not a bishop. That's another reason he is not the Pope. Freemasons endorse Francis. Francis was praised by the Grand Masters of the Grand Orient Lodges of Italy and Argentina. They publicly supported Francis's election as the new anti-Pope. In this picture taken of Francis, we can see him giving what looks to be the sign of the Master of the Second Veil in Freemasonry. This is a clear hand gesture given by Freemasons throughout history. It would be no surprise to find out that Francis is a Freemason, because his beliefs, which have been manifested by his words and deeds, are indeed Masonic. The main teaching of Freemasonry is that all religions lead to God. As we have clearly proven in this brief overview of Francis, this is exactly what he believes. For more of Francis's heresy, see the file on Francis's recent heresies. In short, Francis firmly believes and teaches the same heresies that have been promoted by the other Vatican II antipopes. Francis is a total heretic and an apostate. Catholic dogma defines that a heretic is not a member of the Catholic Church. It is therefore infallible that Francis is not a valid pope, but a heretical, non-Catholic antipope.